Enrich was a project that was really about giving options to farmers with grazing systems that could tolerate a series of challenges that often confront them, and that's climatic, rainfall patterns, and land capability. So options that really try and as much as possible remove the word marginal from the farming language. We're looking at what can be troublesome parts of the landscape where forage shrubs actually perform really very well and in so doing provide a feed resource for livestock and manage the landscape, reduce wind erosion, manage water balance better at the same time. And we started off looking at about 100 species of, of shrubs to see which ones could perform better under a whole series of different conditions and then have really started focusing on a smaller number of plants that are pretty widely adapted across a range of different soil types and climatic regions. So on the Richards farm we've picked uh, four of the species that we've identified as being widely adapted and have planted them at a you know, a near paddock scale that farmers can relate to and allowed us to do longer term grazing. To come up and watch some of the work these guys are doing, it was just, hey, this is scientific. They had a, a, a big um, dome shelter and measuring methane and, yeah, it was interesting. And, and, and the way they um, tolerated the sheep and, you know, chased them on foot, it was, was great. So the tests have spanned quite a range of things from assessing how well the plants grow in different conditions. Their, their recovery from grazing, their nutritive value, their effects on the gut of the animal that eats them, and that's on things like uh, parasite burden, methane production, partly because of a loss of productivity of the animal, but also the interest in as, as a greenhouse gas. And then when we moved into the paddock scale, a, a fair, fair bit of energy uh, and attention on how animals select from a mixture, because we've been very specific on looking at combinations of plants to do the job for us rather than just one. In this little site here, this, these sheep were shorn in, in February and the dry sheep were preg tested and put in here and they were there for oh, six to eight weeks. And um, while the rest of the sheep, the, the pregnant ewes were on the lick feeders, these guys were happily chewing away out here on fodder. The forage shrubs have improved the marginal land just before when the, the land was bare, so now they've got some cover on it, so that's great. I've been telling neighbours, well, you know, you can get these shrubs, put them in, and um, you can make marginal lands productive again. That February, March, April period can be pretty, can be pretty light on for Tucker. So if, if you've got fodder shrubs on the marginal land, well, you know, that's got to be a good thing. So we're at the stage now. We know it works. We know what sort of plants can grow across a range of conditions. We know a fair bit about managing animals that eat them, so the next step really is to take it towards the commercialisation so that the plants that we're talking about are also readily available to farmers for them to acquire. So it's working in partnership with nurseries and others in the industry to supply, to develop a supply chain really from the plants right through to a management package for improved outcomes and profit. <laughs> The objective for this project is to improve the nutritional value of saltbush. So most of the saltbushes used by farmers across Australia are gained from wild populations. Uh, we know there was a lot of variation in nutritional value and we just wanted to select lines that have higher digestibility or higher energy values, are preferred by sheep and that means they've probably got lower secondary compounds that aren't so good for animal production. For us, our um, saline land was, had basically no value whatsoever. We, it, we wasn't sustaining any uh, pastures and we started off really with a bare paddock because we weren't even managing them as separate uh, grazing units. The saltbush now and on our farming system, we've got about 20% um, of our farm is salt affected and about um, half of that we've now got established in perennial pastures and it's probably allowing us to run 15 to 20% more livestock than we would otherwise. Uh, and definitely it's uh, allowed us to re reduce the overall risk in terms of our farming enterprise. So we started with 60,000 shrubs that have been collected across the native zone of Australia, which is right through the middle of Australia. Um, we collected from 27 sites. We grew them out and we assessed the plants for laboratory measure of nutritional value and relative palatability to sheep. And this is probably a world first using sheep in the selection criteria for a new plant. And interestingly, the sheep at each site 
seem to prefer the same lines, so very consistent messages from the livestock. We're really starting to look seriously at applying it to our um, less productive cereal land, like um, the high uh, acid and non-wetting soils that we've got a proportion of the farm. And with tight economics now in grain production, uh, we're really looking for other uses for that non less profitable um, portion of the farm. We're now down to five clonal lines which we're um, putting into a commercial or semi-commercial release for research purposes this year. Now we've uh, got to the stage where we've selected some elite plants which have definitely got a quantum of improved productivity from the original plants that we were using. Uh, this is actually giving me a new shot of enthusiasm and I'll be out there re-establishing new plants. To see them now in the nursery, to go from 17 small sites to 200,000 plants in a, in a nursery is really exciting, a little bit daunting, um, but to see farmers like Tony getting really excited about it really makes it worthwhile. I've found it a very satisfying, collaborative uh, process. I, I, I think we've been able to help them um, make the decisions and, and direct the research to some extent. and and uh, I've certainly gained a lot from their depth of knowledge. So it's been of, of mutual benefit and it's been thoroughly enjoyable. And that's been really the most exciting part of the whole project, is seeing the willingness of landholders to adopt and try and explore with us instead of waiting to the end. There's never an end, it's to, to explore with us along the way. And that integration of everything that we've tried to do in partnership with farmers led to the Eureka Award, which is really quite exciting for all of us to I think be recognised for integrating so many different things across a large area with so many different people. It was a really nice recognition of that. It just gives us that, 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 that feed fill in the March, April, May period. You know, those salt scolds have now got some uh, green growth on them, so the sheep are loving it. So yeah, it's, it's got to be a good thing. Certainly, uh, the perennial pasture farming systems is really something that uh, we all should be looking at very seriously, particularly on those marginal uh, soil types.